be seated in God's presence. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Hallelujah. We are continuing in our series of messages. God works through his word. This may be the last one in this particular series. I don't know yet. But it's not up to me. It's up to Jehovah, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. In verse 18, it says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy receive it. How many of y'all have heard a message before that just got you rejoicing? Amen. How many of y'all have been to church and I mean, you, you just started to hear some preaching and I mean, you're like, whoa, glory to God. I can make it this week. And then about a day or two later, the devil attacks you and you're like, oh, it ain't working for me. <laughs> Anybody been there? Yes. I have. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. This is what happened. You know why? Because we didn't have any root in ourselves. Amen. Yet hath he not root in himself but do it for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises of the word, by and by, he is offended. Anybody ever been offended by the word? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I have. Praise God. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, then we bless you. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not to say you never have. I, I, Pastor Troy has. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I come near to losing my salvation sometimes because things wasn't working out the way the Bible, the Bible says it's supposed to. But the Bible never promised me that things were going to go always smooth. Praise Jesus. Amen. The Bible Amen. never, you know, it, there was an old an, a country song that this woman used to sing to this guy. I guess, that, that, you know, the country songs are always a breakup type song. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, she's, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Anybody ever heard that song? No. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> In other words, what, what she was telling me, what she was telling the man, <laughs> stop looking at me like that, Ashley. <laughs> I think Ashley said country singing is not my, <laughs> it's not Pastor's uh, best, <laughs> that's not his best genre. Then. <laughs> but she was telling the man that I never promised that everything's going to be hunky dunky, glory, glory, praise God. Amen. And God never promised that to us. The word's going to come, and God's going to give you his promises. He's going to give you his commands. But I can tell you right now that Satan is going to try you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when you get, see, the good thing about a test is it brings a testimony. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't have a testimony without a test. So the tests are going to come. Not from God. The tests come from the devil and from the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But, but see, you cannot get offended when these things happen. you got to learn to stand. Praise Jesus. Amen. Now, like, like I told y'all earlier today, uh, um, with all them, I mean, with the way traffic was coming here, I mean, and, and then we come here and then things ain't working. Nothing's working. And now it's thundering in my message. Maybe Henry said, Amen. That's what it all right. Think, think positive. Amen. <laughs> but, but the thing is, I, I this morning I told y'all, maybe maybe 15, 20 years ago, I would have probably been kicking some chairs around just so upset and frustrated. But thank God, maturity and, and knowing these truths has set in and I let and I recognize. Here we go again, devil. You're just trying to attack, but you're not going to stop this service from happening. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, fi we figured out ways to make this thing work. And then even in the middle of the worship, things start acting up. I said, I ain't letting this stop. Praise God. Amen. I, I wouldn't give, a I'll take a couple of minutes to try to get the music going. I said, if the music don't get going, then we're going to praise God anyhow. Amen. We'll do it a cappella. We've done it before. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and God has done it again. Hallelujah. Amen. But so tribulation and persecution is going to come for the word's sake. But it's going to be up to you whether you get offended or whether you stand strong. Hallelujah. Amen. See, nobody can offend you if you don't let them. That's true. People can say things to you, but you can decide whether you're going to be offended or not. Things can happen to you, but you can decide whether you're going to be offended or not. Praise God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I mean, people people insult me. I can I decide whether they offend me or whether I move on. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I told y'all a couple of weeks ago about the dude who almost hit me, and then he called me a, a blankety blank idiot, a, a word I would never say as a, as long as I know Jesus. Now, <laughs> well, you know, I allowed myself to get offended. Praise God. Um, but, you know, the Lord dealt with me on that. And then later on, somebody said something else to me. And I said, nope, I'm not going to get offended. I said, I'll let the person know. Actually, you're doing me a favor by saying that to me. Cause, or, or, you know, he wrote something on YouTube, a, a little snide remark. I said, thank you for watching the video and commenting on it. Because now that, that put the algorithm's going to push it up higher. So thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> videos, don't get mad about people commenting on your video, whether it's nasty or nice, because if they, cut, they, they comment on your video and it's nasty, it's still going to help the algorithm push it up higher, praise God, for others to see. What are you going to get offended about? Hallelujah. You know, I, I told y'all about my pastor when, I, when we were in Japan, that some people used to talk about him like a dog sometimes. Other pastors would talk about him. And that got his, that, that actually got their people interested in him, and they would come visit the church just to see if he was as crazy as they said he was. And they come there, and they said, "Well, we staying here because we like this kind of craziness." Praise God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah! What are you getting mad about? You know, some some of these people are going to get you promoted. Hallelujah! Yeah. The way they act, the way they treat you. If you show yourself um, kind and considerate, regardless of how they act. And you don't pay. You don't try to get vengeance on them, and you don't try to get them back. God's going to promote you. I know this for a fact. I've, it's happened in my own life. Praise God. Amen. My wife can testify to you that, that how many, many times I've I've worked with some difficult people, and those same difficult one man, a couple of people, want to fire me one day, and then not too well, maybe long afterwards, they want to promote me. Praise God. One man who wanted to fire me was my biggest advocate in trying and, and got me and promoted me twice. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you going to even get offended for? I decided I'm not. When he started acting that way towards me, I said, I'm not going to get offended. I forgive him. I said, Lord, you, you help me to go through this and you and you deal with him. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you, before, by the time that man left, he wanted to put me in a suitcase and carry me there and, and to his next job. And not only that, he when he got to his next job, he opened up a job for me. I told my wife, I said, I ain't work for that man no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. So you, you don't, don't be worried about what people say about you. Praise God. Don't be getting offended by, by um, the way people act. People are people going to talk bad about you. People are going to diss you. People are going to dog you out. And negative circumstances are going to come into your life because we are in this world. Praise God. Amen. But you've got... You got to stand on God's word, even when circumstances and, and are dictating that seem to appear to be the opposite of what God has said. Hallelujah! Amen. If God has given you a promise, stand on that promise. See, Abraham and Sarah. It took them over twenty years to have that promised child, and and, and you know that they. Uh, doubted God sometimes because then they did decide to have an Ishmael instead of an Isaac. But after God said, I'm not accepting Ishmael, you wait until I give you your Isaac, that's when they, they saw that they had to wait and stand on the promises of God no matter what. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They, they went through some circumstances. They went through some difficulties. I mean, you look, read about Joshua. It took, um, during the wall of Jericho, it took seven days. For that wall to fall down. They had to wait seven days. They had to walk around that wall in silence for at least six of those days. Most of y'all, well, so when I say most of y'all, I'll even include myself at, at least one point in my life. After the second day, you'd have been like, maybe I didn't really hear from God. Maybe this wasn't really God's will. Now, some of y'all might make it to the third day. As many of you probably wouldn't make it to the sixth day. But you, six, you, 
I think many of us, after the sixth day, you've been like, you know what? This wall ain't coming down. Forget it. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done with you all. But they went the seventh day, praise God. And the wall came down. Joshua didn't allow himself to get offended by the word of God. He stuck it out. And the seventh day they shouted, and those walls came down. Glory to God. Amen. So you've got to receive the word, not just with gladness. You've got to, get, you've got to let it get rooted and grounded in you in order for it to be effective in your life. If it's not rooted and grounded in you, then you'll be one of those people that, tip, that go around talking about, ah, that, that, that faith stuff ain't true. Yeah, you know, Pastor Troy be talking about God heals you and does all this other stuff. I, it never happens for me. I, I believe God for three whole days to be healed and it doesn't happen. How about believing God until it happens? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Don't Amen. quit. Don't. We got a song. Don't give up. Don't you give in. That, that's a little bit better, right? That's not country. <laughs> you don't, don't give up. You don't quit. You continue to believe God. Don't get offended. Hallelujah. Amen. And then verse 22 goes on to say, He also that received the seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. How many of y'all know that you can choke the word? How many of y'all know that as powerful as God's word is, this see, Satan can't stop word, God's word from happening. Praise God. Amen. Satan can't stop God's word from becoming effective in your life. But do you know who can stop the word of God from becoming ineffective in your life? You. You. Is it because God's not powerful? Oh, no, that's not it. God, the man, Jeremy said it, free will. I'm sorry, I thought I started lower. Uh, I heard y'all got good ears. <laughs> I'm young. <laughs> see, see, I'm old when it's convenient for me. I'm young when it's convenient for me. <laughs> God respects your will. Do you know everybody who goes into eternity right now without Jesus, it is, it is not God's will for them to do that. The Bible says it's his will that all men be saved. So why aren't all men, be, all men saved? Their will. They can choose Jesus or reject Jesus, but nobody has gone into an eternity without Jesus apart from God wanting them to be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's the same thing with any other blessing that God wants to give you. Everything that, that is good, it is God's will for you to have. Hallelujah. Amen. God doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you poor. He doesn't want, he, he doesn't want you hopeless. He doesn't want you um, trouble-minded. Praise God. Amen. But you've got to go by his word. You've got to respect his word. Or you can do things that will choke the word. Praise God. Amen. And focusing on the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches will choke the word out of your life. Praise the Lord. See? Now, you know, I, last week I got personal, and I'm going to get personal again today. Don't get mad. Well, if you do, I don't care. I'm just a messenger. Praise Jesus. I, I'm only delivering the mail. He, get mad at him. Don't get mad at me. Don't shoot the messenger. That, that was an old saying from, from the um, old days when kings used to kill, they actually did kill the messengers who gave them bad news. <laughs> but listen, if you're spending more of your time working, you spend it, you, you're working all kinds of overtime, weekends, holidays, you're working three or four jobs, <laughs> And you're buying all kinds of material things. And you never spend time with, you don't spend time in prayer because you're too tired. You don't spend time reading your Bible because you're too tired. You don't come to church. You don't come to the Bible study because you're too tired or you're too busy. What do you think you're 
spiritual life is going to go? Why do you think that, that, we, that people so easily backslide? Why do you think that we can easily fall into sin? Praise God. We can easily fall into sin because we are letting everything else cloud out God in our lives. And when we hear the word, it, the, the, the occasional time that we come to church, Bible study, whatever, and we hear the word, it doesn't always register with us. I know it's tight, but it's right. It doesn't always, we don't always grasp it. And then sometimes people don't like pastors and messages like this because they'd rather hear that God, God, and, and, and this, part, this is partly true, God loves me no matter what. Amen. He does. That's true. But that doesn't, I love my children. I love my wife no matter what. But that doesn't mean I want the, my children to, to go out and do drugs. Praise God. Amen. That doesn't mean I want my wife to run off with another man. Hallelujah. Amen. God doesn't want you doing things that's going to hurt you. But see, there's people who will sit there and say, oh, oh, I don't listen to that preacher. God, God wants you to have fun while you're here on earth. In other words, he wants you to go to clubs and, and, and shake your onion. <laughs> my, my pastor, he would actually turn around and shake his butt. <laughs> I'm not going to do that for y'all. <laughs> but yeah, he, but you were going. The, 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 the devil doesn't mind you doing all that. But see, he'll tell you that God doesn't mind that doing you doing all that either. I remember one time we was out sharing the gospel. Me and um, some of our church members when when, I, when we were in Japan, and you know we used to go down to the pray to the real red light district and, and the clubs and stuff like that. And so. I was standing in front of a club. I was I was pretty bold back then. I stood right in front of the club, giving a track to people that they were going in the club to shake their butts. Um, <laughs> and then, then one guy, he, he stops. He's got um, two girls in his arms, and he says, Oh, hey, brother. I said, hi. He says, oh, you're, so you're a born-again Christian. I'm like, oh, yeah. He says, me too. <laughs> I said, oh? He says, oh, yeah. He says, hey, I love the Lord. He, and he tells me he goes to a particular church. And he says, yeah. He, he says, so I said, so um, then what are you doing going in the club? Oh, there's nothing wrong with us going in the club. You know, he says, the Lord don't mind us having a little fun. <laughs> he says, and besides, I can go in there and I can, I can meet girls and I can tell them about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with that? <laughs> I said, oh. I said, I'm not sure what your church is teaching you, bro, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. I said, you're letting the world get into your system there. Oh, he, you know, he tried to argue with me about all that, but I, I, I told my, you know, I don't, I don't like, I didn't want to waste time arguing with him all the, the whole night because I had other people I wanted to share the gospel with. Praise God. So yeah, I talked with him for a little bit. You know, I remember another time I ran into a bunch of drunks and trying to share the gospel with them, and one guy says, ah. I know Jesus. I can speak in tongues. But <laughs> so, <laughs> drunk is a skunk. <laughs> I see. The thing is that some there's a lot of people out there that believe in what they call this grace message, and there and the Bible is full of grace and mercy. Hallelujah. But grace is not licensed to sin. Praise God. Amen. Grace is not do what I want to do. Grace is God's power and ability to help you and I live holy and live right for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And see, when it comes to the cares of this world, when it comes to the deceitfulness of riches, God is not impressed by how much money you make. Praise God. Amen. He's not impressed with your work, how much overtime. You can impress your friends. I can buy a new car and impress my friends, but if I didn't get it God's way, God's not going to be impressed. How many of y'all would like to have God more impressed with you than your friends? Amen. Amen. You see, if, if your friends are impressed, 
you've gotten your reward. Yeah. This, is, this life is short. I could care less about my friends being impressed with me in this life, praise God. There was a time I wanted everybody to, know, and I'm not talking about before Christian. I, I'm talking about even as a Christian. I wanted to, to have material things, and I wanted people to come over and, and see see all my stuff, see my new car, and, and see how God has prospered me. So I get in the debt, get it. That's not God's will. Praise God. If you want, God, God will bless you, but He's going to do it His way. You choose to do it your way, which means to do things that's going that's outside of his will, working and and, and, um, and, and working more. You know, I, I did that two job thing that God took, you know, because I didn't trust God. And I did two. I worked two jobs and God had to tell me one time, he said, I want you to quit that second job. And I said, you don't seem to understand what's going on, bro. <laughs> I said, you don't see. Don't, don't you see that my, my wife's not working anymore and, and we got these bills to pay and, and I got a newborn son. I said, um, you, I think you, you need to um, uh, give that some consideration before you tell me to quit the second job. You know what God's answer was? Quit that second job. He didn't respond to anything else I said. I, I'm sure he sat there and listened, waited for me to shut up, and when I was finished, he said, quit the second job. Praise God. Amen. So I said, all right, I'm going to obey you. I'm, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. But you need to remember what's going on here. I, I, my wife ain't working no more. I got kids to feed. If, if, if they go hungry, this is going to be your fault. Don't quit. <laughs> I quit the second job. Kids, did y'all go hungry? Nope. Did we, ever, did, did we get kicked out of the house, baby? Nope, we weren't homeless. Praise God. He supplied every need. Hallelujah. He took care of me. He took care of his family. And and when we, when it was time for us to leave there, he supernaturally provided every money I would never have been able to work for for, for for no matter how many jobs I had. I would never have been able to save up enough money for what we needed to move here to Rhode Island, praise God, mm -hmm. to get my whole family there, to get all our household goods there, to have a hotel for, for a couple of months. None of that, I would never have had the money for that. God supernaturally took care of all of that for us, glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And why did he do that? Because I decided when he told me to quit that second job, I said, I'm not going to allow myself to get caught up in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Praise God. Amen. And when I did that, God said, now let me show you what I can do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And he did it. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we, we, like I said, we can, we can, my wife and I, we can tell you testimony after testimony. Some, sometimes I forget, I forget a lot of stuff and we, we get in the car and my wife said, why didn't you tell him about this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't say exactly how much, but I was saving time spent time that he gave to me. Mm. So, but he did. Time, time, ten, time, yeah. ten, yeah. Six, yes, he did. If you got a hundred dollars, then you got a what? Ten thousand, thousand dollars. Thousand dollars, he gave us, you know. He gave yeah. Uh, was that, over a hundred thousand? No, I mean, <laughs> okay, I mean, he gave us all total. I know is how much you know they paid. Mm. So he gave us thirty thousand dollars all total. Oh, okay. yeah. from uh, airplane ticket, everything. Well, nowadays, that, if you yeah. multiply that by inflation, yeah. that's about a hundred thousand now. Yeah. yeah. So then we refund came for the tax time. We got a bunch of money came back. Yeah. So that's what our God can do. That's so. If we discourage, we're going to remind ourselves what God done in the past. They encourage ourselves so we can, you know, keep going. Because each mm. time we face, we forget the past. Amen. So, Amen. God is good God. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Very good God. Yeah. So if you just, and that's the thing, if you get your, stop putting your focus on how the world tells you 
to get rich. Praise God. Amen. I'm not telling you not to listen to wisdom. I, you know, um, for example, you know, I know there's millionaires and they got books out and stuff like that. You know, um, and and I'm not telling you not to read those books and get some wisdom. Even Jesus Himself said that the children of the world are, in some cases, wiser than the children of light. So sometimes it's, it's good to read and know what some of these million, if, if you're supposed to trying to be a billionaire or whatever, it's good to know what these guys do. But don't do everything that they do. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of these guys are schemers. They do some nasty stuff. And it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So you trust God. Learn some principles of, of finances and stuff like that. But don't get caught up in the cares of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't put getting rich. Don't put building a house before God. Don't put any of those things before God because it's, going, it's deceitful. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's deal with one more so we can close this thing out. But he that receives seed. Say receive. Receive. So you got to receive. Praise God. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word. Now listen to this. Heareth the word and understandeth it. Hallelujah. Amen. Which also beareth fruit. Praise God. Do you know it's up to you to bear fruit? Do you know it's up to you to bear fruit? Whose responsibility is to bear fruit? My responsibility. And how does bearing fruit come? By hearing it and understanding it. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you listen to these preachers that say, oh, you can never understand the Bible. I'm like, what are you preaching for then? That's supposed to be your job is to help me understand. You get up there and preach and tell me I can never understand it. Get out of that pulpit. I can tell you right now, if I ever invited somebody here to preach and they said that, I, I would stop them in the middle of that message. Yes, sir. I would tell them, I said, I, I would still give them some money because, you know, because I'm a loving person. But I'm like, you're done. <laughs> Taco, give them a check. Bye. Praise God. Don't believe me? I've done it before. I've, 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 rebuked, I've rebuked people who got up here before and I've rebuked it in front of the whole congregation. Some of y'all may not remember when I did that, but I did and I will do it again. Praise God. You know why? Because I love y'all. I got to, I'm, I'm, God has took, called me here to protect you. Hallelujah. And I have to, and, and, and that may mean I, sometimes I might have to lose some friends. Do you know how many people that want me to, you know, they come out of town and they want to come here, they want me to give them an opportunity to preach? If I let everybody who come here, come to town and want to preach, uh, y'all wouldn't hardly hear much from me. Because you got all these preachers that come from overseas and stuff like that, and they find that you know they um, contact me and they're like you know, is it here, here? Here's what someone will say. I, can I come visit your church? I say yeah. I, mm -hmm. I ain't stopping you from visiting. But what they're really asking is, can I come and minister in your church? And so I try to find out what is what do they believe. And I'm like, nope. You can come visit. The key word is visit. Praise God. Amen. Doesn't mean you're going to get up in the pulpit. It doesn't even mean I'm going to give you, always give you an opportunity to say something. You know, because some, sometimes I give somebody an opportunity to say something and they want to preach. But I'm not going to let anybody just come up here and say anything to y'all because some preachers don't believe that you can truly understand this book for yourself. Praise God. Amen. They think that, that and that's, and, and by making you believe that you can't understand it for yourself, they can lie and deceive you and trick you into believing anything. That's why some people go to those $500 prayer lines. Praise God. They, they, they were telling me about a guy, about a um, guy who went to a $500 prayer line one time got, and, and wanted, got a prophecy. And he said, oh, the man knew everything about me. Well, this is Pastor Flowers who was telling me about this because I, because I think it's a good story. Pastor Flowers, it was a this guy was a tailor, and so he says, "Yeah, Pastor Flowers, I went to the, to so and so's meeting and I gave him five hundred dollars and he told me all about my life." He said, "Oh, he did, huh?" <laughs> yeah. He said, "That dress that you're sewing right now, whose dress is that?" 
Oh, that's his assistant, that lady. I said, when did she, he asked, when did, you, when did she bring that dress in? Oh, yesterday. And how, how much did you tell her? Oh. <laughs> See? If you don't know the Bible to yourself, you can get lied to, cheated. Anybody can manipulate you into doing anything. You got pastors sleeping with the, with the women in their congregation because they the women don't know the Bible. And they let the pastor deceive them, praise God. It's sad. It's a, it's a, you know, there's some beautiful women in this congregation, praise God. But, but I love, but I love you. I will not lust after you. Hallelujah. I can acknowledge you're beautiful without having to lust after you. And matter of fact, because you're beautiful, I want to protect you even more from these schemers and scammers out there who's trying to hit you up and, and sleep with you and then get you pregnant and then run off. Or even worse, get you venereal disease. One, one pastor gave, his, gave nine, 19 women in his congregation AIDS. Beloved, you better receive this word. Praise God. You better stop buying into what everybody says. Hallelujah. Amen. You better, you best, if, if a preacher ain't living holy, he's not worth your time. Amen. Amen. If a preacher is, is, is living, if he's clubbing just like everybody else and telling you it's all right, don't you go to that church. You can leave here. And, and if you need, if you just can't stand me no more, at least find a church where the pastor is preaching the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not go, do not be deceived by these guys. Who, and matter of fact, any pastor who can come in here and split the church and call and, and get you to leave me and follow him, he's not worth your time. Praise God. Amen. I would never go to anybody's church and take people from their church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And anybody who comes in here and you, you follow them, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to try to get you back. Because if you're dumb enough to follow them, then you didn't care. You didn't You didn't want to hear the word of God in the first place. Praise God. Amen. It doesn't mean I'm not going to pray for you. I will. But I'm not going to chase after you. Hallelujah. Amen. It is your job and my job to receive the word of God. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, you, don't sit up there and believe in somebody just because they're charismatic. There's a lot of good speakers out there. Yes. Some people can... Some people can, I can listen to them and I get jealous at how good they can speak. But I realize that it's not my area, that's not my calling, and I realize that some of them are good speakers, but they're also schemers. Praise God. Amen. If I, if all I can do is be boring and give you the word of God, at least I'm giving you the word of God. And it's up to you whether you receive it or whether you go, oh, I'll be glad when Pastor Troy's done with this. It's up to you. Praise God. Yeah. I tell you, the Lord told me a long time ago to stop worrying about that kind of stuff. He told me to give my word and stop worrying about who's doing what. Praise God. Amen. That's all. So what is the sower supposed to do? So. So. What is your job? Receive and understand. If you don't receive it, you don't understand it, I'm not accountable. Praise God. When I stand before Jesus, and Jesus asks, how come so-and-so didn't receive my word? And I'm going to say, Lord, I sold it just like you told me to. Yes. I sold it. And he's going to smile, and he's going to say, you sure did. And into my kingdom, and into the joy of the Lord, praise God. Amen. He's going to tell me, well done. That's what I want to hear. Now, I don't want to be one of the preachers who go to hell because I didn't tell you the truth. Praise God. Amen. There's there's plenty of them down there. And you're not going to be able to accuse me. You're not going to be able to say, Pastor Troy, you didn't tell me the truth. Nope, I'm not going to hear that out of your mouth. Praise God. <laughs> I'm going to tell you I told you to. Uh, oh, I was telling the truth. You just wasn't here to hear it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You, you wasn't there the day I was telling you about that. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You didn't watch the video. I know sometimes we, we got work schedule, but just, well, there's no, but we got video. And beloved, if you don't want to watch me, 
there's still good preaching on YouTube that you can listen to. Praise God. Amen. I'm not telling you that I'm, I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm just all that without the bag of chips. <laughs> y'all know I'm teasing. <laughs> I got to get... I gotta put a little humor in there because y'all looking like, oh God. <laughs> All right, let me come. Let me give you. Let me finish this up. And we're gonna get ready to get out of here. I'm. I'm already gonna be running late anyway. But uh, all these services we gotta go to. But it says, "But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundred and some sixty and some 30. Praise God. Amen. Now, it's up to you how much of the word you get. Praise God. Amen. And it's also up to you the level and percentage that you are at. Hallelujah. Amen. But you got to decide. That, look at, jump right real quick, quickly with me to Luke 8.15. Luke says the same thing here as Matthew. But I want you to hear Luke's version real quickly. Luke, which is, this, we're in, if you're in Matthew, go to Mark and then Luke. And then go chapter 8. And look at verse 15. It says, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, say honest. honest. Say good heart. Good heart. Hallelujah. That, how, who, whose job is it to have an honest and good heart? Yours, praise God. God, give me an honest and good heart. He, he'll give it to you by you listening to his word, praise God. Amen. They have an honest and good heart, and having heard the word, keep it. Say, keep it. Keep, keep it. it. See, whose job is it to keep the word? And look at this, and bring forth fruit with Patience, say patience. Patience. Uh, these, these are all our responsibility. I, just like many of y'all, I don't like the P word. Patience. Uh, have patience. Leave me alone. <laughs> but I've learned I have to have patience. Praise Amen. God. But it is your job and my job to keep the word, and then we will bear fruit with patience. How many farm? How many of y'all have ever planted anything and have gone out the next day to see if, if the thing has grown? And if it hasn't grown, you got mad. <laughs> you did that, Ashley? I kind of did that too when I was, when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, we planted some watermelon seeds one because, you know, because we wanted some watermelon, me and my brother and my cousin. And we go out there, hey, we buried the seeds, we put water, we put fertilizer, where's the watermelon? takes time. Praise God. Amen. You don't get the watermelon the day after you planted the seed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In due season, that watermelon comes. Amen. We didn't stick around long enough to find out where that watermelon came. <laughs> but, um, but the thing is that you got to have patience and trust God. Receive the word and trust him. Keep it. Say keep it. Keep it. That means no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, no matter what temptations come at you, you keep the word in your heart. Let it get rooted in you. Let it grow in you. And stand on it. Praise God. Amen. 